Right, so an important one this, and this is understanding resilience as a trader. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some examples of why you're going to need high resilience, what it is, and how to increase your own. That's the key part here. Okay, so one thing's for sure is there are going to be absolutely loads of different setbacks along the way on your trading journey. And you're going to have to be, ha be able to handle those rationally without emotions affecting your decision making, which then can have a knock on effect to further progress and outcomes down the line. So let me give you an example of that. So let's say the same thing happens to trader A and trader B. They both take a loss in the market, okay? Which we're all going to do. We're all going to take. The difference here is how we handle those setbacks and those losses. So trader A is rational. They don't react. They respond. They have balance. They have perspective. Yes, they're disappointed that they've taken a loss, but they recover from that setback mentally very quickly. They understand or have a probabilistic mindset and they stick to their plan. They know they're going to take losses. That's just a loss. It's a cost of doing business and they continue with their day or whatever they're on with. Trader B is not, is not resilient. They react. They revenge trade. They're angry. They're devastated. It affects those in like a ripple effect around them. Maybe they're angry, aggressive, mardy. You know, it affects the, oh, leave so-and-so alone, you know, whatever. They chase losses and they make more errors due to irrational, poor decision-making. So their refactory period here is much longer that, you know, they can be affected by days or weeks from this setback, whereas this trader handles it, dusts themselves off. Yes, they're disappointed, but they move on more quickly. What then happens is their P&L, their progress is affected quite dramatically because although the same thing happened, trader A has the setback and continues along with their normal trading plan and their progress and their rational decision making. Trader B, they make poor decisions, emotional decisions due to their low level of resilience. And that totally has a, uh, has a massively negative effect compared to trader A. But remember, the same thing happened. Yeah. So we can have the same tool. I can have the same event happen to me and somebody else because I'm more resilient and I'm at peace with my decisions and outcomes and understand what I can and what I can't control. Then my trajectory after that same initial setback can be hugely different to another trader. So as you can see here, same event happens. Trader A ends up succeeding overall and trader B ends in failure. And what's the difference? The difference here is that resilience word. Now, resilience is defined by the ability to handle setbacks or to bounce back. Yeah. And, you know, as I've said at the beginning, there are going to be lots of different setbacks along the way that we need to be able to handle them rationally and employ solid critical thinking and decision making after the event. So the next part here is, well, how can you increase your level of resilience? And the great thing is there are loads of things we can do. OK, and it's fundamental for you to check in and see where you're at with these things and what things you can do to increase your own level. So ultimately, here are some pointers for me and things that I've reflected upon over over my time. So habits and routines. Yeah. Morning routine, evening routine. That might be going to the gym. It might be having a wind down routine of an evening, whatever that is. And however, that works for you. If you've not got any routines that's going to affect things like your discipline and your sleep and everything else in and around it, which is going to affect your trading. The next thing is sleep. Now, I've done loads in personally on my sleep, and, and, and here's a few things that I do. So no, ca no caffeine after 12. It's still in your body when you go to sleep otherwise. Um, try not to eat three hours before bedtime. Don't drink two hours before bedtime and remove screen time one hour before bedtime. Those things are going to have a dramatic effect to... This isn't about quantity of sleep. It's about quality of sleep. OK, um, otherwise you'll, you'll wake up feeling just as tired as you went to bed, but you could have had eight hours. But it depends on the quality of them eight hours. OK, um, also things like getting morning light into your eyes first thing in the morning is going to set your circadian rhythm up for the day. There are loads. Of, there's loads of stuff on sleep that you could research. I sleep with a nose strip, with mouth tape and with an eye mask. So it's something I'm quite passionate about because I know it makes a huge difference. So maybe you look at your sleep routine 
and there's things that you can do to increase your quality of deep sleep, restorative sleep, that's going to remove brain fog and enable you to feel more alert uh, and have um, a better day from that. Yeah. Diet. I'm pretty sure if I ate McDonald's for two weeks, that's going to start affecting my clarity of mind, how I'm feeling, which affects how I'm thinking. So all of these things are interlinked. Okay. Exercise too. I'm pretty sure no one's ever regretted doing some exercise. That might be a step count per day. These things are also, it's really important that you understand that what gets measured gets managed. The aura ring, whoop band are things that are going to help you be disciplined and track your progress. Without tracking sleep or steps, then it's all guesswork. You won't know how that's playing out or your progress in and alongside that to measure it. Meditating is also a way of stress control. Yeah, there are lots of different things you could do for your own stress. It might be kickboxing, martial arts, that's going to relieve some stress. It might be walking, whatever. But meditation is going to help you manage your stress levels. One thing's for sure is if your glass is already very full with other stresses in and around your life, except, you know, not including trading, when you pour trading in, your glass is going to overfill. And that's going to mean that you fall into this less resilient, um, poor decision-making, reactive, emotional state of mind. It's really important as well to consider how you get balance and to live your life with intention because ultimately a lot of people go all in with trading, which is obviously very important. However, if you're not getting any fun or your relationships are poor, you're not having date night with the wife or husband, uh, you're not spending time with the kids, you know, your balance overall is going to be out of kilter, which then means you're going to lack the ability to put setbacks into perspective. You know, having one trading loss today is not going to define your success six months, 12 months from now. You know, and there are lots of people in the world who would love just to have that problem today, just to have had that trading loss and not to be, you know, having other things going on that are probably going to be far worse than that. So the ability to rationally put setbacks into perspective is going to be really important. Discipline in one thing is disciplining in, in everything. So if you find that you've got strong routines and you're exercising and your diet's, you know, reasonable, um, then that discipline is going to breed into your trading as well. Yeah. Also, traders that have the ability to be in line with their long term vision and mission and not be overturned by their by short term gratification and dopamine. OK, so chasing unrealistic profits or expectations short term is going to affect your long term, you know, ability to achieve those goals. OK, I've put alcohol here. I don't drink. OK, but I know there's going to be lots of traders watching this who go out on a Friday and Saturday night and get absolutely shit faced, which ultimately then means, especially when you get to my age, you're going to be having that hangover for days after. Yeah, you're going to have brain fog. You, you're not going to be feeling sharp, alert. That's just, again, going to ripple into all of your trading stuff. So again, if you've got a clear long-term vision and mission here and you know where you want to go and what you want to do, you've got to review these habits and, and, and how you're living your life because your trading is going to suffer as a consequence to it. Again, a resilient trader or trader A has realistic expectations and a probabilistic mindset. Without it, you're going to think I've done something wrong and you're going to chase that loss back and make irrational poor decisions. Again, resilience can be increased by having a strong support network or community around you. We have that in power, um, but you know it would take for you to participate in that too and reflect who it is you're you know, spending time within and around that. Um, and yeah, reduce other pressures as best as you can. And that's why having other routines and stress management in and around that is going to keep your, um, you know, keep your cup room in your glass to be able to deal with other trading challenges. A few things other to, to consider is that the more rational trader is going to make less unforced errors. It's like a tennis measurement, isn't it, when they're playing a game that, you know, Unforced errors cost points. While unforced errors in trading cost you money, and it can be substantial amounts of money. Now, the reason I use the word less is because you're never going to totally remove them because we're human beings and we will make mistakes from time to time. But if you've been 
drinking Friday, Saturday night, and you've got brain fog on Monday, and you've had rubbish night's sleep, and you've got stresses everywhere. You're not looking after yourself in terms of diet, exercise, sleep. You've not got any balance or perspective in your life, then you're going to make lots of unforced errors. So that's also a challenge too. And the last thing to, or two more things, but one of the other things here is I often see is that there are only lessons, not losses in trading. It's a social media thing. I've seen it a few times and it's rubbish really, because it's not true. Now for trader A, there's no lesson here. It's just a probabilistic loss. They stuck to their plan. They were rational. Yes, they took a loss. Move on. Now for trader B, there was a lesson. It was a loss, but how they reacted to that loss is a lesson. Okay. Now we would have all been trader B at some time, me included. The difference is I learned about those decisions and my resilience and things that serve me. And now I'm trader A. So we can all change. Yeah. So the lesson here is how trader B reacted, not the fact that there was a loss. And it's really important to understand that whenever we take a loss in the market due to this BS that's on social media, everyone thinks, oh, what have I done wrong? I took a loss. Well, you are going to take losses. The challenge here is, was that an unforced error loss? Was it something that could have been prevented within your control? This downward move and all these other, you know, negative ripple effects to this would have been under that control. Yeah. So, you know, in summary, this video has gone through a resilient trader and unresilient trader, how that can have negative effects moving forward, how it's going to affect your decision making and critical thinking after it, and the things that you can specifically do to increase your own resilience. So a takeaway from this is to really ponder and reflect upon how resilient you think you are out of 10 and look at closing some of those gaps. Can sleep be improved? Can you be more active? Can you get down the gym? Can you look after yourself a bit more? Can you find balance? Yeah. And come up with some specific measurable actions, maybe invest in measurable uh, wearable technology to be able to do that. So I'll see you on the next module.